Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us see what are biocontrol agents. So we have been talking about biocontrol, that is how to control plant diseases and pests using living organisms. So let us see what are those agents, what are those living organisms which help in doing this. Now biocontrol agents are nothing but natural enemies of insect pests or weeds. Now what happens is if you have some living organism which are naturally enemies of insect pests, what will happen? they will tend to destroy them. For example, let us suppose there is an organism which is an enemy of a weed. So what will happen? That organism will always try to uh, kill the weed or it will always try to eat up the weed or it will always try to damage the weed in some form or the other. And that is what is desirable to us also because we want weed should not be there because weeds interfere with the normal and healthy growth of a plant. So we do not want weed to be there. So if there is a natural enemy of weed already present which will harm weed or which will kill the weed, then what happens? We really do not need to use any insecticide or pesticide to kill the weed because insecticides and pesticides have several other bad side effects which we do not want. So the concept of biocontrol agents is all about the organisms which are naturally enemies of the insect pests or weeds. Now, when we say enemies, now these enemies can be in any form. It can be that they are predators. That means those organisms can eat up. So they prey on insect pests or weeds. So here in this picture, you can see that there is a bird which eats up a small insect. Now let us suppose this small insect is an insect pest which causes diseases in plants. So we want to get rid of this insect. So there are two options. One option is to spray insecticides which will definitely kill the insects but at the same time it will harm the plant. It will also harm indirectly those organisms which will consume that plant. So they are the adva these advantages associated with insecticides. The other option is we release a lot of birds like this which eat on those insects. So what will happen? These birds will start eating up those insects. So we will get rid of those insects. So as a result, but at the same time, the plants will not be harmed. Uh, other organisms will not be harmed. So using such natural enemies is helpful. So one kind of natural enemy could be predator. That means those who prey on insect seed pests or weeds. The other type could be pathogens. Now what are pathogens? Pathogens are disease causing microorganisms. Now it could happen that there exist some organisms which can cause disease in the insect pests or weeds. So this is also uh, applicable for both insect pests or weeds. They can enter inside their body and they can cause some disease in them. Third type is parasitoids. Now parasitoids is more applicable for insect weeds, insect pests and not weeds because in insect pests it is possible that some organisms enter inside the body of the insect and stay there as a parasite. So which is a parasite? Parasite is an organism which stay inside the body of the host and also harm the host. So there can be certain organisms which will enter inside the body of the insect pest. It will get all its nutrient from the insect pest and it will also harm the insect pest. So that those kind of organisms are parasitoids. And finally herbivores. Herbivores are those which directly feed on plants. So these herbivores can directly feed on the weeds that is the unwanted plants. So that is how the herbivores will get their food and at the same time we will get rid of the weeds. So these are the four different examples of natural enemies or they are the examples of biocontrol agents. Now we will look at more examples of each of these categories. So let us start with predators. Now when we talk about predators, you can take all of these examples. For example, let us start with the ladybug. So here you can see the ladybug. So this ladybug is a predator of aphids. They also consume small insects, caterpillars, small mites. So they consume all these small, small insects. So they are the prey of this ladybugs. So ladybugs can actually help us to get rid of all these small insects and mites. 
Next is dragonfly. So if you see here, this is the dragonfly and this dragonfly feeds on mosquitoes. Now, if the dragonfly goes into water, it feeds on the mosquito larva and in the air also it feeds on adult mosquitoes. So if you want to get rid of mosquitoes, you can just bring in some dragonflies there. So if dragonflies are there, mosquitoes will not be there because they will all be eaten up by dragonflies. Centipedes. So if you talk about centipedes or spiders, they are all garden predators. Even frogs, lizards, they are all garden predators. That is, they, you will often see them in green areas like garden and they feed on small, small insects and worms which are present there and which can cause diseases or which can harm plants. So they all help in eating them and getting us rid of them. If you talk about cats, cats can also feed on mice which are often seen in fields and mice can also harm the plants. So these are some of the examples of predators which feed on certain insects which otherwise can cause plant diseases or can cause harm to the plant. The next category is parasitoid. Let us now look at the next category that is parasitoid. Now this is one of the most widely used biocontrol agent. Now what happens in this is these kind of organisms they lay their eggs inside the body of a host and which is who is the host here host is the insect that is the insect pest or the undesirable organism which cause plant diseases so that insect is the host here so these organisms will lay their eggs inside the body of the host and then the larva will develop using the host for their food when it will gradually develop and then finally the host will be killed so it is something like the parasite that is this organism, the biocontrol agent will utilize the host body for its growth and development and finally kill it. So examples of parasitoid is Amphidius holimani. So this is a parasite against the insect called Amphids. Aphids. Eretmocerus. This is against white flies, so you can see this, these, this is how the white flies look like. So these are the white flies and these are the aphids. So this, both of these are against the white flies. And white flies are very common in plants. You would have often seen these small white insects present on the leaves of the plant or in other parts of the plant. So these are against white flies and these white flies cause wilting and black shooting on plants. So these are, so this Eretmocerus and Encarcia formosa, they act as parasites for white flies. That means they lay their eggs inside the body of white flies or on the body of white flies and then what happens? The leg, eggs gradually develop into larva, so it utilizes the white fly's body for food, and finally the white fly is killed. So the white fly is completely utilized for the development of the uh, parasite, and finally the white fly is killed. So that is the concept of parasitoids. Next category is pathogens. Now we all know what is a pathogen. These are disease-causing organisms. Now. Disease causing organisms when we talk about, we will talk about bacteria, fungi, viruses. So all these are pathogens and they are capable of killing the insects or the weeds. So let's first talk about bacteria. In bacteria we have certain special bacteria like Bacillus thuringiensis, which is often termed as Bt. In short, it is called Bt. So it infects insects like moth, butterfly, beetle, true flies. So all these kind of flies are infected by this Bt. So this bacteria are available. It is also available in the form of sachet uh, of dried spores, as if like some powder in some small spore kind of structure, like right? some powdered form, coarse powdered form. It is available in sachet, which when mixed with water and if it is sprayed on plants. Yeah, it it will protect it it will actually protect the plant from insects like moth butterfly beetle because it will kill moth butterfly beetle and other flies so that's how it will protect the plant from those insects if you talk about fungi so in fungi there are many different fungi which can actually 
kill or which can actually cause diseases in the insect pests and kill them. So one such examples are metarhizium. So this is against beetles, grasshoppers, spiders, mites. So you can kill all of them. There's trichoderma which can treat at the spread of fungal and bacterial growth on the tree wounds. Now this trichoderma is a free living fungi that is it lives on its own. It, it doesn't depend on others for its living. So it is free living and it it prevents it can also prevent the silver leaf disease dutch m disease these are some of the diseases from which trichoderma can protect the plant cordyceps is again another fungi which can protect the plant against arthropods so cordyceps is against arthropods that is it can cause it can act as a pathogen for the arthropods arthropods all the insects fall under this group if you talk about metarhizium this is against beetles so i'll write down some of the names beetles grasshoppers spiders mites so these are some of the insects against which metarhizium is effective and the last category that is viruses now in mean viruses one important virus is the rapid hemorrhagic disease virus so this protects the plant against the rabbit hemorrhagic disease. There are vaculoviruses. These are another class of viruses which infects the invertebrates. So they can infect the invertebrates and that is how. But at the same time these viruses, vaculoviruses will not have any negative impact on plants. But they can attack insects and arthropods. So they act as biopesticides in crop fields and Looking at their structure, why are they called vaculoviruses? Because they have large, large rod-shaped circular DNA viruses. So because of that, they are called vaculoviruses. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.